Time passes on, but I am ever present and timeless, Murdo MacDonald Bain. We measure time by the repeated cycle of each year and now we are in the beginning of another cycle of time. Yet it is our measurement of time that makes us look into the past and try to scan the future, while the only real thing is the ever-present. For centuries we have been ordering our lives by devices for measuring time. Clocks have been invented to regiment the hours. It is obvious that this orderly regulation of human activities is a necessity, otherwise chaos would result in our world. But within each one there is that reality that creative consciousness that is not confined to space nor has it ever been regimented into the physical order represented by the clock. This is that timeless birthless and deathless spirit of God manifested in the flesh as the Christ of God. This then is the ever-present key to all our problems past and future yet few can comprehend it. It many fear the future because of the past failing to realize that the ever-present creative power of the Spirit of God is the only creative power there is. You have only to compare one hour of distress or worry to an hour of pleasant relaxation and concentrated thought on the power of this indwelling timeless reality to realize its omniscience and its omnipotence. You will have already discovered by human experience that your mind is governed mostly by the clock and moves in the direction of things external to the self. But the mind is also capable of functioning in God's timeless time which is ever-present and which cannot be bound by clocks or cycles or any other physical limitation. It is common knowledge that a state of mind affects your health, your environment and conditions. If you are thus controlled by time your state of mind is not conducive to a perfect state of the body, yet if you will give full mental cooperation to that which is forever present and perfect in itself, the state of mind will be one where all is possible. When you are completely lifted out of the conception of physical time and mortal belief and make direct contact with the Christ within, the Word that was with God, the Word that was God and the Word that was made flesh, you would be healed, lifted out of your physical boundaries of time and space. You would discover your own wonderful divinity through the recognition of this truth, knowing that the Word that was made flesh cannot be subject to any condition except you believe it is subject to conditions and limitations. By earnestly seeking you can make contact with your Christ Self, the Spirit of God manifested in the flesh, and thereby transform your vehicle of flesh by the divine energy that is limitless, and only hindered because of your misunderstanding of the true nature of things. For this divine energy is not subject to time, space, or condition. Although you cannot comprehend what it is, yet it can accomplish instantly what no human aid can accomplish. No matter how long you have been captive to your burden, no matter what man-made concepts say about your condition, you can be helped and healed. For you will know that you have touched the hem of the garment of that divine energy from within. You reach the peak of your understanding through self-illumination, and this makes you the omnipotent onlooker upon the appearances and limitations of human concepts. You will function in God's timeless time, for God is always present every moment of time. You will bless every atom of your body with the inrush of his divine energy, to be renewed by that timeless presence of the Christ from within that sees and knows God the Father to be the only living being therefore never separated from him, I and the Father are one. The Word was in the beginning and that very Word was with God and God was that Word, the same was in the beginning with God, everything came to be by his hand and without him not even one thing came to be that was created. The life was in that Word and this Word is the light of man. This Word is the true light that lighteth everyone who comes into the world. Call no man your father on earth for one is your father which is in heaven. This is the blessing that I give you at this time, so that time will fade into nothingness and the eternal ever-present will take its place. With this realization your healing will not just end in being healed, but all those who look upon you will see the radiance of the Spirit of God shining in your countenance and all can share your good by acknowledging it. You can rend the clouds that hide the face of God from the eyes of the downcast. You will help to dissipate the ignorance which causes sorrow in the world. For when one has seen the perfect vision he cries aloud in his heart, Behold the word of God has been made flesh, the Christ is the only begotten Son of God who dwells in every living soul. With this true vision thousands, yes millions, are lifted from depressed conditions of war, strife and misery for their thoughts are turned into higher channels and their burdens are lightened. Life with the beautiful side of human nature and your own life will grow more and more beautiful until you become an inspiration to the world. 
Look for the good in all things then you will find God in yourself and when you find God in all things and in all people like yourself, God will be with you in all things and he will speak to you from the souls around you. Know that you are strong within no matter how the body may suffer, it is but crying out for its saviour. You will speak to the body about the true state of your real self and what you say from within with conviction so shall the outer take on the reflection of your inner conviction. What you realize today in the inner will be expressed in the outer tomorrow. For lest ye become as a little child ye shall not enter the kingdom of heaven. Let us all then become as little children seeing no evil, thinking no evil, hearing no evil. For only the pure in heart can see God. No one can teach Christ when they have evil thoughts about others in their heart. You hypocrites, take the plank out of your own eye before you can see how to take the splinter out of your brother's eye. A poisonous tongue poisons the soul which wilts in the darkness of its own iniquity. Your virtue is not increased by your condemnation of others. The statements of Jesus who revealed the Christ of God were never spoken from the personal, only from the impersonal. For no truth ever sprang from the personal, only from the impersonal divine mind of God wherein the absolute truth can be found. When the personal mind can merge in with the impersonal, only then can it speak the truth. It is the Father who ever remaineth within me is performing his own deeds. I of myself am nothing, it is the Spirit of the Father within me that doeth the work. I am the doorway into the all-impersonal loving Father of all wisdom and power. Though I am must see itself united in the Father as one, then all that is guile and limitation will be discerned and dissolved away. Through the door of the Christ of God, the Spirit of God manifests in the flesh, through this door alone can you enter into the vastness of the great universal storehouse of God. Then do not do your work for the praise of man, but do it for the love of God. To what then shall we compare the kingdom of God within and with what parable can we picture it? It is just like a grain of mustard seed when it is sown in the north, the smallest of all seeds on earth, and when it is sown it springs up and becomes greater than any plant and puts forth large branches so that all the wild birds can roost under its branches. This means that when the seed is sown it grows while you sleep and puts forth its shoots in all directions, for seeds sown in divine mind grow apace. With this very apt saying of the Master I leave you to think it over in your own mind and heart, and although each year comes and goes time and space merge into each other and disappear for in God there is no time or space, we are all united in his mind, and live and move and have our being in him, expressing his nature, this is our eternal reality. My earnest prayer for you in this year of 1949 is that the greatest blessing that can ever come to man, the realization and recognition of the oneness of all, may be yours. Refuse to be caught up in the net of race thought, nationalities, creeds, politics, disease, ignorance, separation, and death in which the masses have been lost, thereby losing their divine power over the things of this world. Meditate daily saying in your inner heart of hearts, mind be still, let that which really is take its true place in my consciousness, and pray in this manner. Great and mighty eternal Father, thou art the creator of all things. This is thy holy temple, thy perfect dwelling place from which radiates thy love, wisdom and healing to all thy children. I am filled with thy mighty healing power, thy inspired wisdom and divine love and I am glorified by thy radiance in me. My eyes and ears are open whereby I see and hear and my mind receives thy eternal truths, for thou hast proclaimed me thy perfect instrument for thy great and glorious work, that thy will which is done in heaven will also be done on earth. Amen. My love and my peace I give to you to remain with you always. Yours sincerely. M. MacDonald Bain